We did decide on a grade 7 unsolved problem at the conference, the 1948 erdos strauss conjecture. But afterwards, the teachers rebelled. This was just not working in the classroom. Brian Conray suggested that we look at the twin prime conjecture. It's got a long history, and it's a really hot topic right now. Twin primes are primes that differ by two. So, for example, three and five, five and seven. In the classroom, we also want to look at primes that are separated by different amounts. For example, five and 11 differ by six. It's interesting that it seems like primes differ more often by six than they do by two. And that's going to be the focus of this classroom exploration. The cupcake problem was another contender. Imagine that you have three cupcakes and five hungry people. How are you going to split those cupcakes so everybody gets the same amount and that the smallest slice is as big as possible? So of course you could split the cupcakes up like this and you could give everybody a fifth of a cupcake and then your smallest fraction is a fifth. But can you do better than that? Unfair Thrones is a great way to give your students practice subtracting fractions. You start by naming an empress and then naming her children. You get those children to come up to the front of the class. Get your class to put the numbers 1 through 6 in the numerator and denominator of these chairs. Then ask them which is the most comfortable chair, which is the happiest student. And of course they're going to choose the largest fraction without you saying anything. Then you ask which is the least comfortable chair, and they're going to choose the smallest fraction. Then you say the chance of civil war is the difference between these two fractions. So for example here, we end up with a chance of civil war of 30%. Can you do better? Instead of choosing consecutive integers, you can choose any set, and you can try to distribute those so that you minimize the chance of civil war. For example, what is the solution for this set? There it is, and the chance of civil war is 2 over 21, or only 10%. Can you do any better? Well, yes, you can. Here is a superior solution, and the chance of civil war here is only 3%. The chromatic number of the plane is an unsolved problem from 1945. You have to find the fewest number of colors to paint the plane so that whenever you drop your paintbrush, that the two ends of the paintbrush land on different colors. So for example, this uses seven colors. Is this as good as you can do, or can you get less? In 1990, Zhang Mingzhi asked that for any odd number, is it always possible that you can find two integers that add up to that number so that their squares are equal to a prime? So here, the answer is yes for, for 7, because 5 plus 2 is equal to 7, and 25 plus 4 is equal to 29, which is prime. And as a bonus, we also have another solution. 6 plus 1 is equal to 7, and 36 plus 1 is equal to 37, which is also prime. For n is equal to 9, uh, that's also true. We have two solutions. The Erdos-Strauss conjecture that we are not going with was inspired by the Rhind papyrus. It introduces us to Egyptian fractions. Those are fractions that have one in the numerator, like one-half, one-third, one-quarter. But perhaps you want to go with another Egyptian fraction problem. Take any fraction, like 15 over 20. You can degrade that into Egyptian fractions by greedily taking the largest Egyptian fraction of each step. So the largest Egyptian fraction that fits into 15 over 20 is 1 half, and that leaves just a quarter. So you can do that for any number, and it's guaranteed that, you're, that that's going to end in a finite number of steps. So for example, 17 over 20, you can take out a half, and what do you take out next? You don't take out a quarter because a third is uh, a bigger Egyptian fraction, and it goes in there. So this is the solution for 17 over 20, 18 over 20, 19 over 20. In 1964, Ron Graham asked, what fractions can you decompose using only odd Egyptian fractions? So those are fractions that have an odd denominator. 